Well, hey guys, and welcome back to Maine Fish and Wildlife for a little more asynchronous learning. Uh, we're moving on today and going to work on our Maine moose harvest analysis. Uh, this is going to be part one of a two-part series because we have two asynchronous learning days in a row. And when I get back with you guys in our next uh, uh, live class, we will go over this and make sure everybody's in the right place. Uh, before we move on. But let's get part one done today. Uh, just like our bear harvest analysis that we've previously done, we're going to start with uh, a harvest map and we're going to use the exact same map we had last time except this time around I've already plugged in the WMD numbers for you here. So you can see all of our WMDs are already numbered for us in our assignment. And if we check our directions here, step one it says to use the wildlife management district subtotals uh, numbers to put the total moose harvest from each district in their corresponding box on the map. This is just like what we did with our bear harvest. Uh, we're going to go through, we're going to use our actual harvest data from last year uh, here in, uh, in Maine, released by uh, Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, and we're going to go through and look at this. We want to know the total number of moose harvested in each district. So we're looking for these numbers right here. WMD subtotals are going to correspond over here. Uh, to the number of moose harvested in each district, okay? So uh, for District 1, for example, I can go back there uh, up top and I can say, okay, District 1, there were 325 moose harvested in District 1 last year, 2019. Um, and then District 2, 284, we've got... 284 and then it looks like district 3 188 uh, let's see um, and then district 4 was 268 moose so we'll, I'll do the first four with you here and then uh, I'll set you guys free and um, you can work on this uh, independently so step one is done uh, you guys would obviously put in the numbers for all the districts and what you're going to find is as you get down here into these southern districts there's a whole bunch of them that don't give any uh, moose permits at all and we'll just leave those blank and we'll talk about maybe why that is uh, when we get together next time live we'll talk about some of the reasoning behind these permit allocations all right so uh, step two now once we have all of our wildlife management districts labeled with the numbers of moose harvested we're going to go back through and we're going to use a similar color coding system that we used with bears but it's not going to be based off harvest it's going to be based off success rate because what we find is um, all these districts award different numbers of permits based upon their management goals and all of them have different success rates some of them are known to be really great districts really high uh, likelihood of success and some of them are known to be a real uh, tough go of it to try to actually bring home a moose. So uh, that's what we're kind of honing in on here today. And something I want to point out before we even get going here is that 2019 was a particularly tough year for moose hunters in Maine. We had a super warm uh, September week, which really hurt our, our uh, overall harvest success rate. And in general, it was just a tough year um, compared to this past year in 2020. I'm, I'm thinking that data will show higher success rates. But let's take a look uh, through here. And uh, we're going to notice that if a district harvests 70% or more, uh, we're going we're gonna to color that one red for high success rate. Uh, 31 to 69% will go yellow and 30% uh, or less is going to be uh, green for low success rate. That's the, the threshold we'll use. So I got to check my data here and for District 1 I, I'm looking over here District 1 just barely missed that threshold to be a high success rate district that year and if you look that's probably because September was pretty tough because we we beat the threshold in the October season we beat it in the se in the second October season um, but yeah really tough uh, tough going there <laughs> it's crazy to think that 60 percent is tough going but for Maine moose hunting in a northern district like that, it kind of is. Um, so uh, overall, though, we're going to use these um, overall total success rates. So for District 1, it's 68%. So we're going to color that one. Uh, that'll be yellow. And again, you guys don't have to go too crazy on your, on your coloring. But you know I love busting out the Apple Pencil and making a beautiful-looking map here by outlining um, and let's go back down here and see what district 2 looks like oh yeah district 2 we're looking at 76 percent success there for overall that's going to be 
uh, red. District 3, 75% overall. That's going to be um, uh, red as well. Check that out. 71% September and then 88% in October. I think that has a lot to do with weather. That Those 90 degree days during the September week in 2019 really uh, put a damper on uh, the success rates of our hunters. And then District 4 there, uh, we see 60% success. So that one's going to go back to yellow. So let's go up here and I'll do these four with you here. So we said, based on success rates, that District 2 would be red. Okay. We've got a nice red district here. District 3 was red. Over 70% success. And then we're back to yellow uh, on our District 4 for 2019. All right, and then we're going to go through here. And you guys know I'm extra fancy. I like these things to be just beautiful when I'm done and really illustrate where our highest rates of moose hunting success are. So there we have it. Let's get this one colored in here. Oh yeah, this is this is some fancy stuff here. Here we go. Okay. So I've got the first four done for you. I'm hoping at this point you've kind of got the idea. Your job again, you should have all those districts numbered. Now you need to go through and color code it. And remember, you don't have to get as artistic with it as I like to, but um, just make sure you color code those districts. Once you have your harvest totals in and your districts color coded based upon success rate, um, you can stop right there for today. In our next asynchronous lesson, um, we'll talk about building uh, the stacked bar graph, uh, which is uh, coming down here. So thanks a bunch for tuning in today. I appreciate your hard work. And uh, next, next time I see you in person, we'll go over all this and make sure everybody's all set.